It's now time for the Billy C Show. Part of the BillyCBoxing.com network. And we're coming to you live from the Billy C Studios in Lake George, New York, in freezing cold Lake George, New York. I'm Bill Caligero, and it's time for the Billy C Show. Good morning, good day, good evening, whenever you're watching, whenever you're listening. I hope you're doing okay. Today's show is being brought to us by my book, Tom Molino from Bond. Yeah, it's the same book. Tom Molino from Bondage to Baddest Man on the Planet is viable right now, where all books are sold. Get yourself, get Get yourself a copy uh, by going to Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com or drop me an email, uh, Bill at BillyCBoxing.com or Billy at Talkin Boxing, T-A-L-K-I-N-B-O-X-I-N-G.com. Uh, Give a shout out to my man, Jesus, who's right on time in the chat room. And uh, if anybody else is watching or listening Join the show. Come on in. Give us your thoughts in the chat room, and I'll talk about it live. Hey, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page, our, our new uh, uh, Rumble account, uh, and also uh, all of the uh, podcasts. Uh, in addition to uh, uh, getting our podcasts wherever you get your favorite podcasts, they're available now on uh, YouTube. So any uh, any likes and subscriptions you could do, we'd appreciate it. All right. Oh, and by the way, if you got Roku or Amazon uh, Fire Stick, Android TV or whatever, whoever carries uh, Ginnico TV, uh, we're also on there. Most of our live events that we've done uh, in the past, I have up there and some other stuff that you will only see uh, on Ginnico TV. So check that out. All right. Um, my topic today, uh, Team Batman Boxing. What's up, man? He's in the chat room. Let me just give a shout out to him. My, my topic today. There's a lot of rumors going around uh, about uh, TC, my man, Terrence Crawford, uh, potentially fighting the winner of uh, Tim Tazu and uh, Sebastian Fundora. Who, why are they fighting? Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, but uh, I, 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 I'm going to give some thoughts on that as, as uh, the show goes on. Uh, but first, let's get you caught up in case uh, you missed some of the fights from this past weekend. Uh, in a uh, elimination bout, you know, I'm so I don't know about you, man, but between the elimination bouts and the silver and the interims and all this crap, I'm 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 so sick of it. But you know, I'll give them what's I give them the credit that that they want to, I guess. Uh, in an IBF and WBA elimination bout, uh, from Saturday on the zone, uh, my new favorite uh, uh, pro boxing uh, supplier. Uh, William uh, Zapita uh, improved to 30 and 0 with 26 uh, of his ones uh, wins coming by a knockout when he uh, beat the snot out of Maxi Hughes, uh, who drops to 26 and seven with a couple of draws and five knockouts. Uh, took place in Vegas. Um, as soon as the fight was over, uh, the first thing that came to mind uh, was uh, seeing uh, Zapita fight Shakur Stevenson. And then, uh, well, I'll get to that in a minute, but, uh, uh, you know, Oscar De La Hoya said the same thing. So uh, we'll get to that in a sec. Okay, let's just get these results out of the way. Floyd uh, Schofield improved to 17-0 and with 12 knockouts when he stopped. Uh, well, he won by disqualification over Estori Ciro, who dropped to 13-2. and Ciro has deducted a point for fouls in the second round and the fourth round. Then he was DQ'd in the fifth round for a low blow. The official time was two minutes and seven, seven seconds. Uh, also on that card, Eric Priest improved to 13 and 0 with eight knockouts when he won a 10 round unanimous decision over Jose Sanchez, who drops to 21 wins, five losses and a draw with 12 of his wins coming by knockout, uh, 100 to 90, and two of the judges had it 99 91. And uh, in one of I'll be honest, it's become, aside from heavyweights, uh, uh, the cruiserweight division is is one of my uh, favorites, and Tristan uh, Calreath improved to thirteen and one with ten knockouts when he scored a second round KO over uh, Marquise Weston, who drops to fifteen and three uh, with a draw uh, at one minutes and thirty three seconds of round number two. 
Also, on Saturday, it wasn't the main event, but it was kind of the most important fight. Uh, my man Joel just popped in in the chat room. How you doing, brother? A longtime uh, viewer and listener. Haven't seen or heard from him in a while. Glad he's uh, in the chat room. Joe Joyce uh, knocked out Cash Ali uh, in a snooze fest. I, I, I got news for you. I, I, I was having a hard time staying awake for this frigging fight. I mean, Joe Joyce improved to 16-2 and two with 15 knockouts. As you recall, his only two losses uh, were at the hands of uh, Zili Zong, uh, both by knockout. Um, and uh, Cash Ali was, was getting some shots in there, just wasn't busy enough. And finally, um, Joyce uh, stopped him uh, in the 10th round. Cash Ali uh, drops to 21-3 and three with 12 knockouts. Uh, my thoughts on this uh, fight... Um, Look, Joe Joyce is way too slow. He's got zero, big zero defense, okay? He takes way too many shots. I doubt he's going to be much of a threat to anybody, uh, the upper echelon of, of heavyweights. Um, but here's what I think. What do you think? You see the, you see the uh, light bulb pop up over my bald head? Uh, the, the, what I think is Francis Naganu. I couldn't help but think about Naganu. This is a perfect fight for him. You know, Joe Joyce, he's a he's a, a highly regarded. He's ranked. Uh, a lot of people like him. He's got pop. Um, Francis Nuganu against Joe Joyce. That fight could sell, and uh, it could really let us know about Nagano. Is he is he going to be a, a, a fighter that can contend uh, in today's heavyweight landscape? I mean, if he knocks out Joe Joyce, I mean, the only other guy to do that was uh, Zili Zong. And uh, if Joe Joyce can knock out Naganu, well, uh, that's a, just another notch in uh, Joe Joyce's belt, potentially getting him a shot uh, at, a, at a big money fight. And it would also nail the coffin in Naganu's boxing career, in my opinion. Um, now, the main event on that card, even though most of us were kind of keeping our eye on that fight, uh, Nathan uh, Heaney improved to 18-0 and with a draw uh, when uh, he got that draw. I shouldn't say he improved. Uh, I've, I've never looked at a draw as being, a, a, it's not a win, but it's not a loss. So I, I don't know if you should say improved or dropped to. Uh, he, he, his record changed to 18-0-1 uh, when he and Brad Pauls uh, fought to a 12-round uh, draw. 116-113 for Heaney, 115-114 for Paul, and the proverbial 114-114. Uh, to uh, uh, make it a draw. In the co-main event, um, uh, in the Super Bantamweight division, Leon Davies improved to 16-0 and with eight knockouts when he scored a second-round knockout over Eric uh, Ayala, uh, who drops uh, only the second fight in his career. He's now 15-2 and at nine knockouts. Uh, in a super middleweight fight uh, that I thought was pretty entertaining, Zach Parker improved to 24-1 uh, and with 17 knockouts when he won a 10-round unanimous decision over uh, Tyrone Zugi, who drops to 27-2 and two with a draw. Zugi was a, uh, a former world uh, title uh, holder. Um, had his moments, uh, had Parker in some trouble, uh, but uh, Parker was a, a moving target all night long, and uh, that got him the win. And uh, in the featherweight division, uh, Dennis McCann improved to 15 and over to draw when he won a 12 round decision over Brad Strand. I thought this who drops his first uh, fight. He's 11 and one. I thought this fight would be a little more uh, competitive, um, but um, it wasn't 116, 111, 116, 112. And one judge had it 118, 111. Uh, I don't know if you caught this fight uh, on Sunday on St. Patty's Day. It was on the zone. I catch it because I get up. Uh, every day, like three in the morning. Okay. Juan, give a shout out to my man, Juan, who just popped into the chat room. I hope you're doing well, my man. Um, Connor Wallace. Uh, there were, there was a card, uh, um, over on the other side of the pond. Um, and, uh, Connor Wallace, uh, fought, uh, Jack Gipp. Now, when I looked at this, Jack Gipp went into this fight undefeated seven and oh, with seven knockouts. Connor Wallace was, uh, uh, 12 and one with uh, 10 knockouts. And um, the thing that caught my eye was Gip had been out of the ring for, for a while, but two young, uh, you know, good looking prospects. 
What an exciting fight this was. If you missed it and you have the zone, go watch it. I mean, it was a beautiful fight. I, I, I loved it. On St. Patty's Day, uh, a couple of uh, UK fighters fighting each other. Um, it was great. Well, actually, uh, Australia. Uh, Jack Gipp was from Australia, so I'm wrong about that. But Connor Wallace uh, uh, wins by a six-round stoppage. He improves to 13-1 and one with 10 knockouts. Jack Gipp loses for the first time. But what a great fight. Uh, from Australia, it was uh, it was pretty good. Uh, also on Sunday, uh, Dillian White uh, jumped back in the ring and he fought Christian Hammer, uh, and uh, uh, he uh, uh, he got the win, uh, stopped Hammer uh, after after three rounds to improve to thirty wins, three losses, twenty one of his wins coming by knockout, and uh, Christian Hammer drops to twenty seven and eleven with seventeen knockouts. I, I doubt we're going to see much uh, more of him. Um, all right, so here's the thing. In case you missed it, um, surprise, surprise, Keith Thurman got an injury, right? And uh, he's backed out of his fight with uh, Tim Tazoo. Now, this doesn't surprise me at all. I, I, you know, I was very disappointed that they were even giving Keith Thurman another chance, but this is the PBC, don't forget. And uh, they do things that are their advantage, and they could give two shits about the sport of boxing, in my opinion. Um, and thank God, and I said this when the fight was announced, that the WBO did not sanction this fight. Remember, um, Tazoo's got the uh, WBO title. Uh, well, uh, as it would uh, fall out, which, uh, you know, if you recall, remember the injury, uh, the so called injury Keith Thurman had with some kind of uh, cat catastrophic car uh, crash. It turned out to be like a parking lot fender bender and he, he couldn't fight. And then his arm and his shoulder and his big toe and his nail and his hair wasn't cut right one time. Uh, you know, he backed out of fights. I mean, I, you know, he's a disgrace to the sport of boxing, Keith Thurman, in my opinion. And and I loved him at first. I thought he was going to be like, you know, s such a such a quality fighter. And he's turned out to be nothing but a joke, in my opinion. Um, but uh, he backed out of the fight. And uh, Sebastian Fondora had been on the undercard and um, he got moved up and got approved to fight Tim Tazoo. Now, the WBO approved this fight. Uh, so the title was on the line, which kind of surprised me because Fondora is coming off a knockout loss. A lot of times for world titles, you know, um, in order for them to improve it, the fighters got to most of the time uh, be coming off a win. Or if they're coming off a loss, a close fight loss, like a decision. Very rarely do you see a, a sanctioning body, level, let alone a major sanctioning body, approve a fight with a fighter who's coming off a loss and a knockout loss to boot. But they did. And uh, Sebastian uh, Fundora is now taking on uh, Tim Tuzu. Uh, for the WBO. And no, wait, there's more, ladies and gentlemen, because the vacated WBC junior middleweight title was also put on the line once Keith Thurman's ass was kicked off the card because of the injury. So now we have the WBO title, which is owned by Tim Tazoo, and the vacant WBC title, which is on the line, both titles on the line uh, in that fight um, on... Uh, uh, on the 30th next week. Uh, again, it's a PBC that wants to give you free fights, uh, but that's a pay-per-view, right? So that's a pay-per-view. But um, but here's the whole topic of my show today. Terrence Crawford. You guys know how I feel about Terrence Crawford. I've been any longtime viewer or listener of this show uh, knows that uh, I've I've been a fan of Terrence Crawford for a long, long time, even before a lot of people, including you, jumped on the bandwagon. A lot of people uh, said that he was uh, not good, that he, you know, his his record was built up. But uh, listen, he fought everybody who's anybody. He was the B-side until they finally realized this kid had talent. Remember, he was brought in as on a B-side because he had a good record and everyone thought this guy, how good can he be? He's from Omaha, Nebraska, right? Well, he proved everybody wrong. That was, you know, years and years ago. Now he's uh, arguably one of the top, uh, two pound for pound fighters in the world today. Um, and I, for one, wanted, um, I, for one, wanted to see uh, Terrence Crawford uh, fight Canelo Alvarez. Now, I know that the size, this, this, 
uh, difference and everything is is huge. But there's every so often uh, a special fighter comes along. And I truly believe in all my heart that Terrence Crawford is one of these guys. And I think that he would not only compete with Canelo, I think he beats Canelo. Um, but that's neither here nor there. We all know that Canelo did not choose to fight him, did not choose to fight what the masses wanted uh, to see him fight David Benavidez. Instead, he chose Jaime Mungaya, who I personally think, and it seems like I'm the a minority here, I personally think that that fight's going to be a, a, an exciting fight. I think it's going to be a close fight. Uh, so Terrence Crawford is set, you know, left holding his you-know-what. And uh, here's the thing. It looks like maybe Terrence Crawford isn't so, you know, uh, being uh, left out in the cold as one might think. Because since he was able to win, he's got a direct shot uh, as being a mandatory challenger for both the WBO and WBC, should he decide to move up and and campaign at junior middleweight. Now, remember, he was waiting around for Errol Spence to decide when he was willing and able to fight. And Errol Spence said, well, if I fight him, he's going to have to fight at junior middleweight. And Crawford said, I don't care what way we fight. I'll fight you and kick, your, kick the shit out of you again. You know, and, uh, he, and now you, you all of a sudden, you got the WBO and WBC on the line uh, for Tazu Fandora. And Crawford is like, okay, that's a good fight. The winner of this fight um, against Terrence Crawford, I think, uh, is, uh, is, a, is a really good fight. And, and assuming, you know, not to, to jump ahead, but assuming Terrence Crawford wins, now, all of a sudden, he's got another belt, another uh, uh, title, a couple of titles in another weight class. And I think, you know, should he want to move up because there was talk about uh, him fighting even at middleweight. Um, look, my whole point about Terrence Crawford um, is that, you know, he's towards the end of his career. You know, he's in his late 30s, 36, 37, I think. Um, and he's, he's never really been paid what he deserved. And I think that, you know, uh, potentially a Tazu Fandora fight. Uh, now, remember, you know, PBC's got their, their claws in Tazu. Uh, but I could see I could see where that fight could happen uh, as long as we kick the PBC to the curb. PBC, to me, is, is uh, you know, terrible for the sport of boxing. Um, and, I you know. Like like the fights that are coming up on on the PB, I, I'll watch this one only because I, I want to see the Tazu. But honestly, you know that particular fight. Where where are my fights? Uh, that particular fight, um, you know, I, I really I, I don't know. I don't really care about. It. And and the other one with Tank Davis, I'm not even going to buy. I'm not even going to get it. I'm telling you all right now. I'm going to do what you're not supposed to do. I'm going to either get a stream or watch it the next morning on YouTube. Because I'm not paying for that fight. That's a bullshit pay-per-view that should no way in hell be a pay-per-view, the Tank Davis fight. And despite uh, David Benavidez being David Benavidez being on that card, I, I, I still won't do it. Um, you know, uh, we got a team, uh, Batman Boxing, saying, I do favor to Zoo, though crazy as it sounds, many Crawford fights uh actually haven't fought an opponent as dangerous as tim i don't know dude i i mean i gotta be honest with you you're i i gotta disagree with you 100 percent on that um to uh, tim to zoo who's tim to zoo for you know um you know crawford's got this crawford's a rare breed and i'll tell you why he's got the boxing ability there's no question about it okay uh, he, he's got great footwork. His hand speed and accuracy is really second to none. Um, but the but the killer with him, and he's very hard to hit because of his mobility. But the killer with with Terrence Crawford is he's got the switch. I talked about this a, a few weeks ago. He's got the switch. He can flip that switch from being, you know, a God fearing nice guy outside the ring, family man, all that happy horse shit, and then all of a sudden get in the ring. The bell uh, the bell sounds. And the guy becomes a beast. And uh, I, to me, that there's no way I would lean towards. To, uh, look, the bottom line 
Uh, I agree with Juan. He says PVC equals poor boxing company. Um, it, you know, you can't knock the company because Al Heyman just keeps putting Benji's in his pocket after Benji's. You know, it's you guys, the fans that get fleeced by by the PVC. But anyway, I like to. I would like to see uh, Crawford. Um, you know, get into the junior middleweight picture and fight the winner of Tazu Fondora. Uh, I think it would open up some doors. I, I think it could be uh, some other good fights down the road in that division. Um, so uh, so we'll see what happens uh, with that. Um, and and like I said, uh, I'll break down the Tazu Fondora fight. Um, I, you know, I, look, I, I thought Tazu would beat Thurman, I beat him soundly. I kind of was looking forward to another beating that uh, Keith Thurman would take. Uh, but, you know, his frail body uh, got injured again. Uh, maybe being out 100 years uh, did that. But, um, you know, the thing about Tazu is I think he's going to be Fundora too. Fundora uh, was a freak of nature with his height. What is he, 6'5", um, at that weight? Uh, it's just freaky. You know, he's got the spaghetti legs chicken legs whatever you want to call it and Tazu is a is a bigger version of his father um and uh looks just like uh tim uh so uh you know we'll see what happens you know but uh i i wouldn't be su su surprised if you know uh Tazu knocks out fundora and then we see uh crawford Tazu sometime in the fall um you know uh, we got the boxing ambassador. Yes, sir. Glad you could join us. It has been. It's been a little more than a minute. So you, you haven't been around for a little more than a minute. Glad you could uh, pop in. Hey, you know, just a side note here. Um, it seems that uh, uh, it seems that this, you know, I started doing the show at this time slot because it was kind of a, a an emergency a few weeks ago. But it seems like we get a, a pretty good diversified crowd. Uh, watching live, I, I get some uh, overseas people who are at the end of their day, and uh, then we got the, the the other people here from the states that are either got their feet up on the desk and they're watching it from work, or uh, they work second shift and maybe they're not working. I don't know, but uh, I mean, maybe we'll just keep it at this time. I, I like it. I like this time. But uh, anyway, my man Jason says uh, Tazu will stop Fundora in four. I, you know what? Fundora is just like. There's so much of a target with those straggly legs. I mean, you know, look, one of the greatest fighters ever to lace on a pair of gloves, uh, Tommy the Hitman Hearns, had those chicken legs. But Tommy Hearns, was, he had the pop, man, and uh, that was the equalizer for him. I mean, uh, you know, Hagler uh, put him out, but uh, in any event, he was out. Uh, some other news I just want to get into. Um, uh, Manuel Char. Uh, you know, Muhammad, but they call him Manuel Char. In case you lost track, right? He's a heavyweight champion. Yes, yes. He's a WBA regular uh, world heavyweight champion uh, who was stripped, and then they gave him his title back, uh, and then all of a sudden they approved a, a, a title match between Char and Cuba Pulov. Yeah, that same guy who's kind of been out of it, out of, out of the main limelight for a while. Uh, that fight's taking place uh, next weekend, and uh, the zone is picking it up. You know, again, I, I feel like I'm I'm a commercial for the zone. I know Jason's going to make a comment, uh, but uh, uh, you know, it's just that I love being able to watch different levels of fights on that network. I just do, and uh, this is a good example of it. Uh, Tommy didn't have that good of a chin. Jason's saying he he didn't against really heavy, heavy hitters, you know, um, but he had that boxing ability and uh, he was just a, 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 I mean, that he had so much pop though. Um, so yeah, that's taking place on the 30th, April 6th, member Popeye to sailor man, uh, you know, uh, Richie, uh, Rivera is his name. He's 25 and two at 19 knockouts. Um, he's, uh, stepping back in the ring on April 6th at the, uh, uh, Mohegan Sun. I, I I was thinking about uh, trying to go ringside for that one. Um, I like him, and uh, it's a Joe DeGuardia friend of mine's uh, card, and um, you know another buddy of mine uh, is going to be there. So I I might I might go to that fight on April sixth. 
Um, and it, it appears to be a pretty decent card. He's taken on uh, undefeated uh, Matthew Obina, uh, 23 and 0. Um, so uh, that's the main event uh, on uh, April 6th at Mohegan Sun. Um, and, uh, you know, another thing I wanted to mention was uh, speaking about Canelo Alvarez. Oh, were we? Uh, but I will. Uh, I just saw that um, his fight with Jaime Mugaya has a rematch clause in it. I, I know that doesn't sound like a big deal because most of the big fights out there today have rematch clauses in it, especially with, you know, the guy who uh, is supposedly in charge of boxing. Um, but I don't know if you realize this, but the only other fights that Canelo Alvarez has had a rematch clause for was against Floyd Mayweather, uh, which was in 2013, and Julio Cesar Chavez in 2017. Now, the rematch clause against the Mayweather fight was on Mayweather's side. He was the one that was able to say yay or nay, and he said nay. Um, and Julio Cesar Chavez didn't have a chance, so there was no reason for it. Uh, so uh, um, interesting, you know, and like I say, and I know a lot of people disagree with me, I think this is going to be a telling fight. I keep saying it, and the reason I think it's going to be good is because you know, as as good as Canelo is, and as you know, much of a fan following he has, and everything. Let's be real; he's a in your face, work the body kind of a fighter. He likes to get in close. He's no boxer. He's not going to dance around and and pull a Floyd Mayweather on you. He's not going to jab you and then run to the other corner. He's not, he's not going to do it. You know, he wants to he wants to break you down and beat you down. Well. I keep saying it, Mugaya, he doesn't have fast hands. He doesn't have fast feet. He doesn't have any defense, and he's a plotter. So how does he fight? Well, same way. He gets in there. He's in your wheelhouse. His opponents tire themselves out on this kid, and then he's got some pop. Just saying. I think it's going to be an exciting fight. Um, have you seen the lines on this fight? Uh you know, um, Alvarez is is you got to lay six hundred to win a hundred, right? I, I don't understand the, the lines with boxing, and I I guess the reason is is that the fights seem so one sided. So you got to lay six hundred if you're going to bet Canelo against Mugai. You got to lay six hundred to win a hundred, right? So you'd assume, hey, let me throw a hundred bucks on Mugai, I'll win six hundred, right? Yeah, no, you only win four hundred fifty. I mean, there's a lot of middle juice uh, that uh, you, you're not kidding, Jason. I can't stand Floyd Mayweather. I can't stand him. The guy, in my opinion, uh, I give him credit for being in shape all the time. And he's he, he won his fights. He won 50 fights. I give him all that credit. But I don't give him credit for standing there and actually fighting fans, uh, uh, fighters. You know, he didn't. He didn't have to. He won. I just don't think he's. Uh, as great as he thinks he is, um, but and I and I've admitted it. Anybody that's watched this show knows I'm not a big fan of uh, of Floyd. I think he ruined the sport, to be honest with you, because of his success. Now I'm I'm not knocking his success because you know I I don't even have as much money as he's got laying around in his couch. I give him all the credit from a business perspective, um, but. Uh, so many young fighters, they want to try to copy Floyd, and it was only one Floyd, really, whether you like him or not. Obviously, I don't care too much for him, but I'm not going to say that there's another one like him, you know, thank God. But, uh, uh, you know, and a lot of young fighters try to em – Canelo Alvarez is trying to emulate the way Floyd made uh, money. He's doing pretty damn good at it, but look at all the criticisms he gets. And just like Floyd gets criticism now – um, like I just said, and Jason took offense to it. Yes, I will agree to that. What what he's saying, 130, 135. Before he was Money Mayweather, when he was Pretty Boy Floyd, I loved him. I'll be honest. Anybody that that you know always thinks I hated Floyd, not when he was with Top Rank, because he did display everything I want. He was like a Hector Camacho. Um, when when Hector before he fought Edwin Rosario, yes, I'll give you that. 
Jason, but that was so long ago. And his style changed just like Hector's did um, to be safety first. And and I truly believe that um, we never got to see the best Floyd Mayweather. And I am resentful for that because I think that the sport of boxing was slighted. We were cheated uh, because of, of Floyd's, um, you know, I don't know, selfishness. Uh, you know, I mean, it's hard to knock a fighter for being smart, not taking punishment. He still got all his faculties, still can't read, but he couldn't read before he fought. Um, but you know, I, it is what it is, but yes, I will agree with Jason on that one thing that when, um, Floyd Mayweather, when he was pretty boy, Floyd, uh, extremely talented fighter go back go back and watch those fights fun to watch i used to look forward to seeing him fight uh but after that not so much um i don't know if you caught this but last weekend uh uh the great roberto duran um was rushed to the hospital and uh had a severe blockage um he's 72 years old and uh he's in stable commission uh, condition right now i haven't heard any updates on it they've uh installed a pacemaker they cleared the blockage and they installed a, a pacemaker so uh, uh everybody that's part of uh, my team here on billy c boxing uh wish uh, roberto duran a, a happy and uh speedy recovery um josh taylor uh and jack uh, catterall who's uh having a rematch uh highly anticipated it was a controversial first fight and it's a highly anticipated uh rematch uh, it was postponed again. Um, it's uh, uh, rescheduled now. It was orig- it was rescheduled for April 27th. Now it's been re-rescheduled for May 25th, uh, but uh, it's still being taken, uh, still taking place uh, in England. Um, this goes all the way back to uh, uh, February of uh, two years ago, um, but. Uh, uh, it was an extremely controversial split decision. Uh, they made the rematch, then it was postponed, injury, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. But, uh, um, yes, um, I'm looking forward to that one. Now, I said earlier in the show, um, you know, um, about after I saw William Cepeda, uh, and I, I thought to myself, wow, you know, what a, what a, uh, this guy was an animal in the ring. I don't know if you, you saw that fight, but against Maxie Hughes, but uh, I mean, just to energize a bunny, mean ass, kick ass bunny. Um, more like, uh, what was that movie? Uh, uh, Harvey. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a fan of old movies and Harvey. It was uh, this drunk's so-called imaginary friend of this giant human sized rabbit. And it turns out that he was real, but anyway, didn't want to ruin it for you. Um, Shakur Stevenson, I kept saying, oh, I, w- I want that. Now, after the fight, Oscar, you know, never shies away from a microphone, said, Shakur, if you're watching, let's get it on. Let's go. Uh, it's a big fight, right? Um, you know, I, you know, I, I tell you, Jason's asking me about uh, a couple other sports real quick. Oh, Tani's interpreted. Yeah, I, I, I saw that, you know, um, in case you guys missed it, uh, you know, the superstar, the Japanese uh, do-it-all uh, player, his interpreter robbed millions from him uh, to pay off gambling debts. And the Dodgers just kicked him to the curb. Uh, it is crazy. I agree. Yeah, I, 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 I do, baseball, I, I like. Unfortunately, I'm a Mets fan. But, um, you know, boxing, football are uh, my top two in, in baseball. I'm actually looking forward to the UFL. I, I like the USFL and XFL. Well, XFL and U- USFL combined, they merge together, and they're the UFL. They they start next week. I'm looking forward to that. Birmingham Stallions are my team, but uh, not because they won. I'm, I'm an Alabama fan. But uh, I don't follow hoops at all, Jason, so I couldn't tell you. I couldn't even tell you who's, who's in it. Um, I do get... Uh, you know, I just look at the 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 uh, headlines, but I really don't pay attention to college hoops or pro hoops. Just never got into it. And uh, I know a lot of boxing fans or hockey fans. I'm not really into hockey either, uh, although some good fights break out on hockey. Live hockey I like, and playoff hockey is exciting. Uh, 
but uh yeah um in any event back to the sport i love um so uh, you know bob arum who's uh shakur stevenson's uh a promoter uh of course they they got right on the phone with him and says ah you know uh zapita and oscar del hoya calling out uh stevenson blah 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 now bob uh who's uh you know becoming a little more calm these days he says uh and i quote let oscar call me and i'll get that fun fight done for july we have a date july 6th we have a venue prudential uh center which is in jersey he says we got it already reserved would certainly consider that fight and then uh uh, uh bob aram said uh Zipita's signed to another pro- promoter so we are not going to make any moves he has to make a move to us so Oscar, if you really want that fight, and that is a good one, um, let's make it happen. I mean, uh, Oscar's proved in the past that he does work well with other promoters. Um, now, as far as uh, uh, Secure Stevenson, uh, rumor has it he wants that fight. And uh, he uh, uh, wants to show that uh, he can fight, and he likes that fight. He's undefeated, 21-0. And a lot of people have lost uh, interest in Stevenson after his uh, last fight, which took place in November. And it was a snooze. As a matter of fact, the last guy that was sitting in the arena, they just woke him up and he left uh, not not two days ago. And the fight was in November. That's how boring that fight was. So uh, in any event. Um, so uh, um, my... Uh, uh, have you caught this one? I, I, I don't know what I was going to say. I'm looking at I'm looking at Jason. He's like, wow. I'm wondering if he's saying, wow, because I don't follow basketball, or if he's saying, wow, because of that uh, uh, gambling uh, debt. Uh, wow, Bruno. Oh, maybe he's saying this, Bruno Mars, uh, $50 million in debt. You know, on every single casino, every single uh, betting thing they have, if you have a gambling problem, call 100. You know, I mean, come on, 50 million. I, listen, I, I, I like to gamble. And I've learned one thing. And I've lost some some money and, and regretted it. But I've learned one thing. When I go to the casinos now, I bring what I'm ready to throw away. I might as well, I might as well pull a, hey, I'll, I'll use it. I might as well pull a Floyd and just throw some money around, right? He doesn't throw his around. But, but I, you know, I, I just throw it around because I'm prepared to lose it. And I don't go and and reach in anymore. Like if I bring, you know, 500 bucks or a thousand bucks or whatever, I'm going to, depending upon how long I'm going to be at a casino, I'm prepared to lose that when I, when it's gone, that's it, you know, uh, but I'll play it until it's, it's gone. Or if I'm, if, if I'm doing real well and I'm up and then all of a sudden, you know what happens if, if you're a gambler, you know what happens all of a sudden things start going sour. I'll walk away for a while. I'm a very disciplined gambler now. Um, at one point, not so much, but how do you lose $50 million? How do you lose? <laughs> Jason say he's got a residency at the, um, uh, at the MGM. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, you know, it, it's the debt with the MGM. I love the MGM's, uh, sports books. So, I mean, you know, uh, and I'm a craps player. And when, when I want to kill time, I'll, I'll play, um, some of those, uh, you know, slot machines or, or I, I just, I was playing one not too long ago. It was, a, it was kind of a computerized roulette wheel, like the, the wheel, it, it was a real ball in there, but it was, it was, it was pretty cool. I never had seen one like that, but, uh, anyway, I don't know if you caught the latest on, uh, uh, on Ryan Garcia, um, according to Garcia, all right. And I haven't heard, and, and I reached out, and I could not get a confirmation one way or another. So I don't know if this is true. But according to Ryan Garcia, the New York State Athletic Commission, I remember him and uh, Devin Haney are fighting that at, uh, in New York, right? Um, according to Ryan Garcia, the New York State Athletic Commission has requested that he get a mental health evaluation, okay? Now, and, and, you know, he, he said he and Garcia says it's it is it not my U.S. constitutional rights to have free speech? Uh, I'm tweeting what I'm tweeting. The, and that causes a premise for a mental eva- evaluation. That's curious. Well, he, here's the thing. And and Oscar De La Hoya, uh, you know, he and Golden Boy said, look, we'll follow any rules. If that's what they want, we'll do it. Oscar De La Hoya said uh look ryan garcia he's doing great he's in great spirits he's busting his ass in the gym 
uh, don't mind the, the post. He takes uh, five or ten seconds a day doing that. And every other minute of the day, he's working hard preparing for the Devin Haney fight. Now, this, that was a comment from Oscar De La Hoya. But, but here's my thought on the New York State Athletic Commission, who I have had run-ins in the past when I was a licensed New York State uh, promoter. Trust me when I tell you, I had some serious run-ins with the New York State Athletic Commission. And quite honestly, uh, you know, so have uh, other people. And, um, you know, they've, they've operated under questionable ways. Uh, uh, it's like a click there. Right? It used to be. I, I, don't, I don't really know the new regime, but it definitely used to be. Um, but, uh, but here's my thought, if that's true. If it's true. That's what I'm saying. I'm just giving you my opinion if it's true. If the New York State Athletic Commission did reach out and request that Ryan Garcia get a mental health evaluation, I say this. What the hell would the New York State Athletic Commission go on a limb and do that? Now, I had a I had an issue where I lost. Uh, I don't even want to say how much. It, it was a life savings one night because in a New York State Athletic, Commi Athletic Commission doing something what they termed was in the best interest of, of boxing when it was totally ludicrous and bull. Okay. So my point is following that, because this state of New York, which I live in and love has a tendency to act like a lot of uh, <clears throat> blue States and people that lean to the blue where they feel that they know better for you than you know, for you. They know better for your kids than you know for your kids. So just listen to what they say, whether you agree or not. That, that's the way New York is, too. All right? Let's be real. I love the state. I wouldn't live anywhere else. I would live somewhere else, Florida. But, um, I, you know, I'd always have a place in New York because I'm a New Yorker. I, I've tried, uh, you know, going other places. And New York's a great state. Unfortunately, we got some issues. But um, I would say this. You know, why the hell would they do that? Who the hell are they to have a mental event? As long as he's physically fit to, to fight and he wants to fight and he's under a contract, you know, under a contractual obligation and he's healthy, uh, as long as he's not, you know, talking to himself in public and hanging out at the subway, uh, dodging bullets and, and axes and all the other weaponry that uh, you could find in a New York State subway system um, or I should say New York City subway system. Um, what the hell is it? Because he's 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 acting crazy. Look, fighters today do some crazy shit to promote stuff. Now, I don't know one way or another whether Ryan Garcia's got mental issues or not. If if somebody asked me if I thought he did, I would say, eh, well, either that or he's using drugs or something, right? But who am I to say that? That's just an opinion, you know. And the truth of the matter is, is that. Um, you know, unless the guy is demonstrating just because he's saying stuff to his opponent and saying crazy stuff, you know, that's what fighters today try to do because promoters really don't promote anymore. Fighters are left with the burden of promoting themselves, you know, and, uh, you know, Jason thinks he's out of his mind. Um, he's asking me if I've seen what he's tweeted. I have seen some of the stuff and you know what? Some of it is kind of funny. And I think it's his way. Remember, he's a young guy. And I think it's his way of trying to get under the skin of Devin Haney, which it's not working. It's not working. Devin Haney is a side. Listen, I got all kinds of respect for Devin Haney and his father. I think I'd love to meet his father. As a matter of fact, I had reached out. I would have loved to have him on the show um, because I, I, I just love the fact that they are a matter of factly you know, they, they discuss things as a matter of factly, and I love it. Plus he's backing up everything in the ring. This is going to be a good fight. Uh, Devin Haney's got a, a chance to really shine in this fight. And Ryan Garcia has got a chance to, to, uh, you know, quiet the critics, um, you know, and just because, you know, fighters that, uh, you know, do crazy things, especially with social media, look, social media has become crazy. All right. You know, obviously, I'm an old, old man, right? But the truth of the matter is, is this whole movement with cancel coaching, you know, somebody, you know, I, you know, uh, Jason and I are, are clashing here a little bit, but at least it's it's in a positive note. I have nothing against Jason, and I hope he has nothing against me. But in the past, you know, I have made similar comments about Floyd, and then I have people immediately call me a racist, 
because I don't like Floyd. Well, that's not fair. Just because I don't like a fighter, it has nothing to do with the color of his skin. I'm far from a racist. 99% oh, of my favorite fighters of all time happen to be of color. You know, and by the way, I wrote this book about a freed slave. And the whole premise of the book is to get this guy's um, spot in history correct instead of them robbing him the way they have. You know, so so I don't like to be uh, used uh, as uh, somebody referring to me as a racist just because I don't agree with something. And And the reason why I bring that up is because social media has a tendency to do that. They have a tendency to not only use the race card like immediately oh it's it's because they're black or it's because they're of color or they're they're uh, now it's everybody against the 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 Jewish people or or the uh, Palestinians and and you know all this stuff right uh, and, and uh, we'll cancel you well we're going to cancel you you know it's like you know what you're not going to cancel me because the truth of the matter is is how are you going to cancel somebody that doesn't give a shit you know if somebody starts spreading stuff around what are they going to do go to everybody that watches uh, uh, and listened um, uh, to my show um, and and tell them all not to, and they're going to not listen. You know, the, the people that, that view and, and watch this show are going to watch it, whether I'm so-called canceled or not. You know, I just think it's crazy. And, and just one thing, and I'm going to stop because I don't want to get cr crazy. You know, this whole thing that seems to be to be moving on about we want to cancel this let's forget this let's so I, I look at i look at the most horrific thing that i've learned about uh, about the united states was slavery okay uh my book tom molino uh what you don't know about my book oh buy a copy right now amazon uh, but no tom molino was actually born a slave okay um during one of the darkest times of the american history slavery right and um you know you fast forward to today's culture cancel culture and they they want to they want to try to to make up for for the for the slavery well it's going to be very hard to do that and and i don't think that we need to forget it or try to shovel it under the carpet i think the future generations need to know that we had an, a, a horrific time in the United States history where slavery took place and we overcame it. That's what I would like to see for future generations so that they see a blueprint of what not to do. Use slavery or any other negative thing that you can pull out your ass about this country or that country or any other country. You look at Germany. You know, Germany uh, tried to extinguish uh, the Jewish uh, rate, anybody that was Jewish, they wanted to get rid of them, you know, um, you know, and they overcame it. And, and they're a, a world power today. You know, um, you know, the, the thing is, is I think from a historical perspective, and this is just my opinion, that future generations need to see the good, the bad and the ugly and what society did to correct it, you know, to correct prejudice. And and, um, you know, if if there's still I'm sure there's people not in my world, but, you know, people that are, are against another race because of the color of their skin or their religious beliefs or whatever, you know, that you want to show that we were able to overcome that and make that disappear. You can't make it disappear by sending checks. You can't make it disappear by just, you know, telling everyone that, you know, you got to do this. You got to you got to uh, unbalance the balance to make up for something that was done in the past. It just won't work. At least that's my opinion. I'm not educated in that arena, so I don't know. But I just would think that, you know, future generations, when they're learning, would want to would want to know the good, the bad, and the ugly and how society overcame it, not trying to hide it. I'll give you an example. When I was doing the research on my book, Tom Molino, um, which you can get on Amazon, um, you know, I, I wanted to try and get because the, the main part of the story is Tom Molino was a slave who fought for his freedom. In other words, he and he was basically forced to fight another slave from another plantation. And if he won, he was free. And that's what happened. Um, so I tried when I was doing research, which took me seven years for this stupid 200 page book. Um, I tried to go. I went to Mount Vernon, George Washington's uh, estate in Virginia. And I tried to get um, some uh, history on slave fighting, right? Well, 
they said it never existed. <laughs> and that's a fallacy. We know that it existed, but they would not let you see any documentation on slave fighting. Now, to me, that was terrible. I, you know, I wanted to see examples because I was trying to get a feel for what it was like. And, you know, it was a form of entertainment. I mean, they didn't have TV. They didn't have internet. They didn't have a cell phone. They didn't have much. They didn't even have lights. You know, they had candles and shit. You know, what do they do for fun? You know, I mean, and, and the thing is, is, you know, um, the slaves were important to the plantations for, for their work and stuff. So to suggest that they just did it to kill each other, that, that's, that couldn't have possibly have been true. You know, although that era of fighting, the bare knuckle era, uh, did result in the death of fighters, regardless of the color of skin, regardless if you won or lost, a lot of these fighters, when I was doing the history on, on that, that era from the late 1700s up until uh, the mid 1800s, they were terrible, horrific battles. And, and the United States, England was really the one that had rules and stuff. The United States, like where Tom fought, you know, they would they'd be in a bar. Uh, me and another guy would be in a bar next, you know, would have an agreement and we'll go in the back alley and have a have a bare knuckle fight that was considered pro because we got paid, you know, so um you know they hit it they hit it you know and and i don't know I, I don't know if that's good or bad me personally i would have rather have seen it and you know have it etched in my mind even though i i do because i i was able to find accounts of it um but uh you know i'd rather have that etched in my mind to me that's a much more um you know uh, a, an education that's much more lasting everlasting but anyway um huey fury uh, remember him? Well, he's been out of the ring three years, uh, and he's returning to the ring April 20th. He's going to be fighting in uh, England. They haven't announced an opponent. Um, his last fight was in 2021 when he knocked out Christian Hammer in the fifth round. Uh, he uh, He's still only 29, and he had this to say, and I quote, this is uh, Huey Fury said, I've been out uh, for just under three years, and I'm looking – uh, for a tickover fight. I guess that means a stay busy fight in England. Uh, he says, I don't even uh, care if I stop whoever I fight. I just want to get in there, work on my stuff, blow the cobwebs off. Then after that, I want to get myself back to the top. I don't care how many rounds uh, I have to return with. I want to get the rounds in, move on to the next one because I want to be more active. My dad and I have reached my dad and I have a journey to do. And after this fight, it's a one way traffic back to the top. That's what we believe will happen. My dad's pushed me all the way and has always stood by me no matter what's happened. Our goal is to go to the very top. If my dad or I didn't think we could do it, we'd pack it in tomorrow and retire. I don't give two fucks what anyone says. That's the truth. Anyone can write me off, but fuck them. The only people who matter to me are my family and their opinion so the rest of them can go fuck themselves well i just wish you if you would tell us how he really feels um speaking of england ricky hatton uh has a comment about the announced uh jake paul versus mike tyson fight um yeah jason's uh making a point he did highlight that and i was uh surprised that they highlight he's talking about uh slave fighting in uh uh unchained dango unchained which uh that was actually there's there was another movie too that had it um and uh some slaves themselves from some freed slaves in the 1800s also wrote about it uh in their memoirs and and some books um and that's where i got it um but uh in any event yeah that scene uh that whole fight was uh was pretty crazy uh, so Ricky Hatton had some comments and he said he believes Muhammad Ali and uh, some of the other greats are rolling over in their graves uh, watching uh, this Jake Paul and Mike Tyson fight unravel. He says, I get the pushing and the shoving and the name calling and the holding each other back crap. Uh, but some of the champions of old are going to be turning in their graves watching that, to be honest with you. I'll be turning in my own grave, watching it myself. This is Ricky Hatton, who, who, who I lo always love. There's only one Ricky Hatton. There's only one Ricky Hatton. I love Ricky Hatton. Um, 
He says, but I got my eyes open in the sense that this is the world we're in now. We're in the entertainment business. YouTube is against MMA guys and MMA guys against boxers. I think that world can exist as long as fights like Garcia and Crawford and Spence and Fury and Usyk still happen. As long as those fights can be made, they can stay in their world and will stay in mine. Both can exist. Uh, and I'm not turning it around saying, oh, this is a joke. We are in the entertainment world, and that's the reason why the YouTubers have the followers that they have, because people do want to see it. But let them have their world and let us have ours. You know, I like that perspective that Ricky Hatton put. He's actually one of the only guys uh, that I've heard put it that way. Um, I've heard people either want to see the crossover stuff or don't want to see uh, the crossover stuff. I like the way Ricky Hatton put it, uh, saying that, you know, hey, as long as you still make the big fights and and there's interest in these other crossover fights, what the hell? You know, and and I agree with him. Uh, Some other quick news. Um, There's uh, a YouTube, speaking of YouTube, uh, at Toro Promotions, Inc. is a a three-fight card this weekend uh, featuring some heavyweights. Um, To Stone uh, Rogava, it's a 5-0 and with five knockout heavyweight. Uh, that's going to be the main event. Uh, he'll be fighting in his first. Now, I'm only mentioning this because I think that it's good that uh, fight fans, especially the younger fans, watch some of these uh, younger fighters. The, the beauty of streaming and stuff is that we have the ability um, to watch these fights because they've become a rarity. Uh, at your local uh, place where fights used to take place because it's extremely hard for promoters, at, at definitely in this state, uh, to do these club shows. So uh, when we get an opportunity to look at some of these young fighters on their way up, it gives you a sense of uh, recognition when and if they make it to a point where all of a sudden you see this name fighting a name you know down the road. So, um, But uh, Rogava is uh, fighting his first eight-round fight, and he's taking on Antonio Brown, who's eight and four with eight knockouts. That's the main event. Also on the card, uh, Alexander the Great Flores. He's 18 wins, four losses, and a draw, with 16 wins coming by knockout. He's fighting a six-rounder against uh, Joshua uh, Vargas, who's uh, five and six with two draws. And uh, Kingsley Iva uh, is uh, an 11 and two with a draw, uh, heavyweight, nine knockouts. He's taken on Derek Cardenas, who's nine and 11. None of these fighters uh, are going to, or, or are, are household names, but they are good to take a look at because this is how fighters' records get built up. And, uh, uh, you know, all of a sudden you see them in a title fight. Um, but uh, anyway, I'm looking forward to a fight next week. Uh, Fabio uh, Wardley against Frazier Clark. It's going to be on Peacock. Uh, it's from the uh, uh, from England. Also, next week is the uh, Tazu uh, uh, Fundora fight, which uh, you know is a pay per view. Uh, which, uh, truthfully, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to get that one because I want to watch that fight. Uh, but the uh, but that next one uh, that they're gonna have um, uh, with uh, uh, what's his name uh, Tank Davis, eh, not so much. All right, uh, this weekend. One of the uh, main fights is going to be Jose uh, Zapita uh, going up against uh, Dalton Smith. It's going to be on uh, the zone, and it's going to be in England. Now, uh, uh, Dalton Smith is an undefeated uh, Brit. Uh, he's 15-0 and with 11 of his wins coming by knockout. The computer sees him at number 62. Uh, he's not ranked in any sanctioning body except the WBC who has him at uh, number 13. Um, uh, so he's 27 years old. He's five foot nine and a half orthodox fighter uh, going into this fight. He's going to have an inch and a half uh, uh, height advantage. Um, he's fought good opposition in the UK, domestic opposition. So I say this, if you're looking at uh, his opposition's record, they're all, a lot of them are, are pretty good. His best win of his career, in my opinion, uh, was actually his last fight that took place in July of last year uh, when he stopped uh, Sam Maxwell, 
who uh, was 17 and one going into the uh, fight. He stopped him in the seventh round of a scheduled 12 rounder. Um, like I said, he's got some impressive wins against some good domestic fighters, but uh, as far as world worldly known fighters, not so much, but he's a young kid. Uh, he does uh, uh, have some pop. He's got some boxing ability. He's fun to watch. Now he's stepping in the ring with uh, Jose uh, Cepeda, uh, who's a former junior world welterweight title challenger. Uh, he challenged for the title in 2019. He's held some, uh, some you know, some lower level belts. Uh, this is a, 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 for the silver title. Um, he's 34 years old. He's a southpaw, five foot eight, giving up an inch and a half. Uh, extremely experienced. He's got 37 wins, 28 coming by knockout, four of his losses, uh, two of which he was stopped. Um, he faced uh, a former world uh, uh, champion. He was challenged for the uh, world title in 2019. Uh, and then uh, one, uh, he fought uh, Jose Carlos Ramirez for the title. He lost a very close and controversial majority decision uh, at his first uh, uh, world title shot. Um, his very next fight, which was a couple months later, ended in a no contest uh, after three rounds due to uh, uh, a cut. But then he rattled off um, uh, five fights uh, in a row, actually six wins in a row, uh, five of which were against really good opposition. Uh, he won a 10-round decision against Jose Pedraza, uh, he won a 10 round decision against uh, Kendo Castaneda. He won a uh, by fifth round knockout over Iron uh, Ivan uh, Baracek, who was uh, 20 and one at the time. This was a, a huge fight for him. He also beat uh, now, granted, an aging Hammer and Hank Lundy. Uh, won a 10 round decision in 2021. Uh, Jose Vargas. Um, he uh, knocked out in the first round. Uh, in their fight in uh, October of 21. And then he kind of had a, a stay busy fight, uh, Francisco Javier Perez, uh, where he stopped him in two rounds. And um, he got another world title shot, uh, this time against uh, Regis Progress. And uh, he lost uh, via an 11th round knockout in that fight, um, which is uh, the second. Uh, so his last three fights, um, he lost that one by knockout in his last fight. He fought, uh, Richard, uh, Hitchens who was 16 and zero, and lost a 12 round decision in that one. So theoretically, uh, he lost two of his, uh, uh, last three fights. Um, and two of which were back to back. The computer has him ranked at number 38, which is, uh, much higher than, uh, Dalton Smith but he's not ranked in any of the sanctioning bodies. Um, the computer sees him as a better fighter than Dalton Smith. And for all intent purposes, uh, I would think um, he is, except I'm going with Dalton Smith in this fight. And I'll tell you why. Um, you know, at this uh, stage of the game, Zipita uh, at, at 34 years old, has ha he's got some mileage on him. And when you see a fighter going in, at least this is my opinion, when you see a fighter stepping in the ring, uh, ultimately back-to-back -back losses, and he's going in the backyard of, of uh, a younger fighter who's, you know, uh, got a little height advantage and is going to have the crowd behind him, um, I think it's going to be a tough fight because Pete is a good fighter, uh, experienced fighter, and he's a knockout puncher. And I think that should he win this fight, Zapita, it's going to have to be by knockout. Um, but I'm leaning towards Dalton Smith in this fight. I think that this will be a career-defining fight for him. It'll uh, line up some other big fights for him. And uh, I'm going with the hometown boy uh, on that one. So um, one last thing I got uh, is a email. Where did I, where did I put it? Um, I lost it. Don't say it isn't so, Billy C. All right. Um, Uh-oh. I'm talking to myself in the third person. That's not good. Um, I got an email. And, and remember, boys and girls and children of all ages, um, if you have any thoughts, questions, comments, you know, uh, just drop me an email. I'll read it online. Or watch the show live and 
be like uh, my friends here in in the chat room and uh, uh, you know oh I didn't even notice my man Rick has popped up uh, Grievous is here oh great I uh, I love uh, uh, I loved uh, these are th those are some longtime listeners so uh, glad they were here too in the chat room but uh, this is comes from uh, the other Alex now if you've ever listened to the show we had a couple of guys uh name alex right and uh you know uh, not only alex papali who, who's part of the show but you know some other listeners so uh alex t uh started referring to himself as the other alex so then we had the other other alex and anyway you had you had to be there for all those episodes but speaking of episodes i don't know if you've caught them but i found a, a lot of early stuff that uh, like I've really enjoyed listening to like the morning show and, and I'm getting a lot of people that want us to bring that back. And I, I have no problem doing it, but I got to get the viewership up. I can't do the morning show unless we get at least uh, close to what we used to have. Um, and it was a great show. And if, if you haven't caught any of them, I've been putting them up on uh, uh, up on the podcast. So subscribe to the podcast and catch those. I, I put another one up. They're funny as hell. Uh, the infamous Jeremy C. and I uh, did them, and we had a lot of guests on all the time, and it was great, so check it out. Anyway, the other Alex, is, uh, his title is His Thoughts on Mungaya and Canelo. And he said, uh, hey, Billy C., I don't chime in much on the current state of boxing, but since you asked for thoughts on Mungaya getting the Canelo fight, here you go. He says, I'm incredibly disappointed Canelo's not fighting Benavidez. Look, everybody is. I, I'm more disappointed that he didn't choose Crawford, but Benavidez, Benavidez is a tough fight. Canelo's trying to take the, uh, you know, the easiest uh, way that he can and still try to uh, pick entertaining fights. So, um, you know, uh, Benavidez is, is a young, big, strong guy. He's, he's going to be too much for, for Canelo. And I think, you know, Canelo uh, diehards aren't going to admit that, but, I think Canelo is uh, his actions speak louder than him signing the contract. But uh, and I like what Alex, I, I like what Benavidez is doing by moving on with his career and uh, making a name for his own self. And uh, uh, I think that's going to pay dividends in 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 the long run. But he says I'm incredibly disappointed. Canelo's not fighting Benavidez. Benavidez has done everything he was supposed to do. He destroyed uh, two top ten contenders to earn a right to fight for the title. And it's not happening. Mungai is a perfect example of the boxing fans having the wool pulled over their eyes. He's an exciting action fighter. His style and his nationality sells tickets. He was on the fast track a few years ago until he ran into Dennis Hogan. He got a gift in that fight. So his promotional team pumps the brakes on the level of competition, and he goes on to fight eight hand-picked opponents in a row, all guy he kicks the crap out of. And I'm going to include Gabe Rosado in that bunch, too. Gabe doesn't win the big fights, plain and simple, no matter how much I like the guy. I like Gabe Rosado, too. I've always loved Gabe Rosado. He's an exciting fighter. He comes to fight. I agree with uh, Alex on that 100%. He says, now we come to Deverinchenko. Sergi is another guy that doesn't win the big fights. I don't care how good he looked in those big fights. He still lost them, all of them. Mugaya goes life and death against Deverinchenko and earns the win. Great fight, but that's not what we're, what we're talking about. Does a win over an opponent who's lost every big fight he's competed in earn a shot at the champion? Of course not. So now we bring in Ryder, another calculated risk that paid off. Ryder can't break an egg. I, I you know, I was live for Ryder when when he was in Vegas. He fought on the undercard of Canelo, um, Daniel Jacobs. And that was actually the first time I ever saw uh, John Ryder. And, and I liked what I saw that night. And uh, up until this uh, this fight against Mugaya, uh, he did good. He did good against Canelo, too. So I don't know about uh, that. But he says, uh, anyway, he says his claim to fame is getting the short end of the stick against Callum Smith. And as the years go by, I'm not even sure Callum Smith was the world beater we were told he was. Ryder is also well known for getting the crap beat out of him by Canelo and somehow managing to make it to the final bell, which I think that's a good indication of why I think Mugaya is going to give him some trouble. Ruga Ryder doesn't hit as hard as Mugaya, and uh, Mugaya took care of John Ryder pretty quickly. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. 
I think moving up all these weight classes and fighting the fights that Canelo has, I think it's catching up with him. But He says, uh, I cling to this ancient idea that if a fighter beats top contenders, he deserves a shot at the title. Now, maybe Plant and Boo Boo were overrated, but they were still guys in line in front of Benavidez, and he beat both of them. He did what he was supposed to do. I love watching a guy fight. He's always exciting, but Benavidez deserved this fight. And look, Canelo can fight whoever the hell he wants, but he's got all the titles frozen, and I'm pretty sure Benavidez was a mandatory. Just my two cents. Well, I can't argue with Alex here. Thanks for the email, Alex. Always a pleasure reading your emails. I Look, I don't think there's anyone that will argue that David Benavidez didn't deserve a shot at Canelo Alvarez. And I think that the move that they're making by moving up into light heavyweight just goes to show that they're, they're planting the seed uh, for a lot of boxing fans to, to, to realize that boxing is more than just Canelo Alvarez. And I think that this fight, uh, win, lose, or draw against uh, Mugaya uh, is also going to, uh, you know, unless Canelo knocks out Mugaya, which I don't think he's going to, um, unless he batters him from ring post to ring post, which I don't think he's going to, um, you know, a win over Mugaya doesn't shut anybody up. You know, it would have to be a, 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 a beat down. And I don't see it happening. I really don't. I know I'm the minority here. But uh, anyway, listen, boys and girls, it was great uh, having you join us today. And I especially want to uh, thank everybody in the chat room. Uh, and I appreciate the feedback and uh, the interaction because that's uh, kind of what the whole premise of this show is. Um, and uh, I uh, look forward to the fights this weekend. Uh, on next week's show, we'll talk about those and any other news that pops up. But in the meantime, make sure you take the time to drop me an email. Uh, and I'll be glad to uh, read it online, you know, live. Uh, and uh, would love to have it. Um, I'm glad to see some of the old faces uh, in the chat room, and I hope they return. Um, make sure you subscribe to uh, our podcast and our YouTube uh, page and our uh, Rumble account if you haven't. Uh, it was it was it was great to see Joel uh, in there as well. So uh, I appreciate it. I feel like a romper room. Eh, you guys are too young. You don't know what that is. Uh, but uh, in any event, uh, make sure you tune in next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Until then, ciao, baby. <laughs>